All improvement in your life comes from changing your beliefs about yourself and your possibilities. Personal growth comes from changing your beliefs about what you can do and about what is possible for you. Would you like to double your income? Of course, you would. Here's the question. Do you believe that it is possible? How would you like to triple your income? Do you believe that that is possible as well? Whatever your level of skepticism, let me ask you a question. Since you started your first job, haven't you already doubled or tripled your income? Aren't you already earning vastly more than you earned when you started? Haven't you already proven to yourself that it is possible to double and triple your income? And what you have done before, you can do again, and probably over and over if you just learn how. You simply have to believe that it is possible. Napoleon Hill said, whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, he can achieve. Perhaps the greatest breakthrough in the 20th century in the field of human potential was the discovery of the self-concept. Everything you do or achieve in your life, every thought, feeling, or action is controlled and determined by your self-concept. Your self-concept predicts your levels of performance and effectiveness in everything you do. It is the master program of your mental computer, the basic operating system. Everything that you accomplish in your outer world is a result of your self-concept. What psychologists have discovered is that your self-concept is made up of the sum total of all your beliefs, attitudes, feelings, and opinions about yourself and your world. Because of this, you always operate in a manner consistent with your self-concept, whether positive or negative. Here's an interesting discovery about the self-concept. Even if your self-concept is made up of erroneous beliefs about yourself or your world, as far as you are concerned, these are facts, and you will think, feel, and act accordingly. As it happens, your beliefs about yourself are largely subjective. They are often not based on fact at all. They are the result of information you have taken in throughout your life and the way you have processed that information. Your beliefs have been shaped and formed by your early childhood, your friends and associates, your reading and education, your experiences, both positive and negative, and a thousand other factors. The worst of all beliefs are self-limiting beliefs. If you believe yourself to be limited in some way, whether or not it is true, it becomes true for you. If you believe it, you will act as if you were deficient in that particular area of talent or skill. Overcoming self-limiting beliefs and self-imposed limitations is often the biggest obstacle standing between you and the realization of your full potential. Albert Einstein was sent home from school as a young man with a learning disability. His parents were told that he was incapable of being educated. They refused to accept this diagnosis and eventually arranged for him to get an excellent education. Dr. Albert Schweitzer had the same problems at school as a boy. His parents were encouraged to apprentice him to a shoemaker so that he would have a safe, secure job when he grew up. Both men went on to earn doctorates before the ages of 20 and to leave their marks on the history of the 20th century. According to an article in Fortune magazine on learning disabilities in business, Many presidents and senior executives of Fortune 500 corporations today were diagnosed in school as being not particularly bright or capable. But by virtue of hard work, they went on to achieve great success in their industries. Thomas Edison was expelled from school in the sixth grade. His parents were told that it would be a waste of time to spend any money educating him because he was not particularly smart or capable of being taught in anything. Edison went on to become the greatest inventor of the modern age. This kind of story has been repeated thousands of times. Self-limiting beliefs, sometimes based on a single experience or a casual remark, can hold you back for years. Almost everyone has had the experience of mastering a skill in an area where they thought they had no ability and being quite surprised at themselves. Perhaps this has happened to you. You suddenly realize that your limiting ideas about yourself in that area were not based on fact at all. Louise Hay, the writer, says that the roots of most of our problems in life are contained in the feeling, I'm not good enough. Dr. Alfred Adler said that it is the natural inheritance of Western men to have feelings of inferiority that start in childhood and often continue through adult life. Many people, because of their negative beliefs, most of which are erroneous, falsely consider themselves to be limited in intelligence, talent, capability, creativity, or skill of some kind. In virtually every case, these beliefs are false. The fact is that you have more potential than you could ever use in your entire lifetime. No one is better than you, and no one is smarter than you. People are just smarter or better in different areas at different times. According to Dr. Howard Gardner of Harvard University, the founder of the concept of multiple intelligences, 
You're possessed of at least 10 different intelligences, in any one of which you might be a genius. Unfortunately, only two intelligences are measured and reported throughout school and university, verbal and mathematical. But you could be a genius in the areas of physio-spatial intelligence, art, design, entrepreneurial intelligence, business startups, physical or kinesthetic intelligence, sports, musical intelligence, playing musical instruments, writing music, interpersonal intelligence, getting along well with others, interpersonal intelligence, understanding yourself at a deep level, intuitive intelligence, ability to sense the right thing to do or say, artistic intelligence, creating works of art, or abstract intelligence, physics, science. As the saying on the wall of an inner city school reads, God don't make no junk. Each person is capable of achieving excellence in some way, in some area. You have within you right now the ability to function at genius or exceptional levels in at least one, and perhaps several, different intelligences. Your job is to find out what it could be for you. Your responsibility to yourself is to cast off all these self-limiting beliefs and accept that you are an extraordinarily capable and talented person. You are engineered for greatness and designed for success. You have competencies and capabilities that have never been tapped. You have the ability within yourself right now to accomplish almost any goal you can set for yourself if you are willing to work long enough and hard enough to achieve it. The good news about beliefs is that all beliefs are learned. They can therefore be unlearned, especially if they are not helpful. When you came into the world, you had no beliefs at all about yourself, your religion, your political party, other people, or the world in general. Today, you know a lot of things, but as the comic Josh Billings once wrote, it ain't what a man knows that hurts him, it's what he knows that ain't true. There are many things that you know about yourself that are simply not true, and these are almost always in the area of self-limiting beliefs. The starting point of unlocking more of your potential is for you to identify your self-limiting beliefs and then ask, what if they were not true at all? What if you were possessed of an extraordinary ability in an area where you didn't think you were very good at all? such as selling, entrepreneurship, public speaking, or money making. Everywhere I go throughout the world, I have taught these principles to many tens of thousands of people. I have filing drawers full of letters and emails from people who had never heard this idea of self-limiting beliefs before, but once they heard it, they changed their entire attitudes towards themselves. They began to see themselves as far more confident and capable in key areas of their lives than they had ever been before. In no time at all, they began transforming their lives and changing their results. Their incomes doubled and tripled and quadrupled. Many of them became millionaires and multi-millionaires. They went from the bottom of their companies to the top, from the worst performer in their sales forces to the highest earning person in their companies. After they changed their beliefs about themselves and their personal potentials, they learned new skills and took on new challenges. They set bigger goals and threw their whole hearts into achieving them. By questioning their beliefs and by refusing to accept that they were limited in any way, they took complete charge of their lives and careers and created new realities for themselves. And what countless others have done, you can do as well. Imagine that there was a belief store, very much like a computer software store, that you could visit and purchase a belief to program into your subconscious mind. If you could choose any set of beliefs at all, which beliefs would be the most helpful to you? Here's my suggestion. Select this belief. I am destined to be a big success in life. If you absolutely believe that you are destined to be a big success, you will walk, talk, and act as if everything that happens to you in life is part of a great plan to make you successful. And as it happens, this is how the top people think in every field. Top people look for the good in every situation. They know that it is always there, no matter how many reversals and setbacks they experience. They expect to get something good out of everything that happens to them. They believe that every setback is part of a great plan that is moving them inexorably toward achieving the great success that is inevitable for them. If your beliefs are positive enough, you will seek the valuable lesson in every setback or difficulty. You will confidently believe that there are many things that you have to learn on the road to achieving and keeping your ultimate success. You, therefore, look upon every problem as a learning experience. Napoleon Hill wrote, within every difficulty or obstacle, there is the seed of an equal or greater advantage or benefit. With this kind of attitude, you benefit from everything that happens to you, positive or negative, as you move upward and onward toward achieving your major definite purpose.
There's a law of reversibility in psychology and metaphysics that says you are more likely to act yourself into feeling a particular way than you are to feel yourself into acting. What this means is that when you start off, you may not feel like the great success that you desire to be. You will not have the self-confidence that comes from a record of successful achievement. You will often doubt your own abilities and fear failure. You will feel that you are not good enough, at least not yet. But if you act as if you were already the person you desire to be, with the qualities and talents that you desire to have, your actions will generate the feelings that go with them. You will actually act yourself into feeling the way you want to feel by the law of reversibility. If you want to be one of the top people in your business, dress like the top people, groom like the top people, organize your work habits the way they do, pick the most successful people in your field and use them as your role models. If possible, go to them and ask them for advice on how to get ahead more rapidly, and whatever advice they give you, follow it immediately. Take action. When you start to walk, talk, dress, and behave like the top people, you soon begin to feel like the top people. You will treat other people like the top people do. You will work the way the top people work. You will start to get the results that the top people get. In no time at all, you will be one of the top people yourself. Maybe you've heard the saying, fake it till you make it, but there is a lot of truth to it. A friend of mine is a very successful sales manager. After he had carefully interviewed and then selected a new salesman, he would take the salesman to a Cadillac dealership and insist that he trade in his old car for a new Cadillac. The salesman would usually balk at the idea. He would be frightened of the cost of the car and the huge monthly payments involved. But the sales manager would insist that he buy the Cadillac as a condition of employment. What do you think happened afterwards? First, the salesman would drive the car home, and his wife would almost have a heart attack when she saw that he had bought a new Cadillac. But after she had settled down, he would take her for a ride around the neighborhood in the new Cadillac. The neighbors would see them driving in a new Cadillac, and as he waved on the way past, he would park his new Cadillac in front of his house or in his driveway. People would come over and admire it. Gradually, imperceptibly, at a subconscious level, his attitude toward himself and his earning potential would begin to change. Within a few days, he began to see himself as the kind of person who drove a new Cadillac. He saw himself as a big money earner in his field. He saw himself as one of the top performers in his industry. And time after time, almost without fail, average salespeople in this organization became sales superstars. Their sales performance jumped, and they earned more than they had ever before. Soon, the payments on the new Cadillac were of no concern because their incomes were so much greater. Emmett Fox, the spiritual teacher, once said that your main job in life is to create the mental equivalent within yourself of what you want to realize and enjoy in your outer world. Your focus must be on creating the beliefs within yourself that are consistent with the great success you want to be in your outer world. You achieve this by challenging your self-limiting beliefs, rejecting them, and then acting as if they did not exist. You reinforce the development of new, life-enhancing beliefs by increasing your knowledge and skills in your field to the point where you feel equal to any demand or challenge. You accelerate the development of new positive beliefs by setting bigger and more exciting goals in every area. Finally, you act continually as if you were already the person that you desire to be. Your aim is to reprogram your subconscious mind for success by creating the mental equivalent in everything you do or say. You develop new beliefs by taking actions consistent with those beliefs. You act as if you already believe that you have these capabilities and competences. You behave like a positive, optimistic, and cheerful person toward everyone. You act as if your success were already guaranteed. You act as if you have a secret guarantee of success and only you know about it. You realize that you are developing, shaping, and controlling the evolution of your own character and personality by everything that you do and say every single day. Since you become what you think about, you should only say and do those things that are consistent with your ideal self, the person you most aspire to be, and your long-term future ideals. You should only think and talk about the things that are moving you toward becoming the person you want to be and toward achieving the goals that you want to achieve. Make a decision this very day to challenge and reject any self-limiting beliefs that you might have that could be holding you back. Look into yourself and question the areas of your life where you have doubts about your abilities or talents. You might ask your friends and family members if they see any negative beliefs that you might have. Often, they will be aware of negative self-limiting beliefs you have that you're not aware of yourself. In every case, once you have identified these negative beliefs, ask yourself, what if the opposite were true? 
What if you had the ability to be extraordinarily successful in an area where you currently doubt yourself? What if you had been programmed from infancy with genius ability in a particular area? For example, what if you had within you right now the ability to earn and keep all the money you could ever want throughout your life? What if you had a golden touch with regard to money? If you absolutely believe these things to be true, what would you do differently from what you are doing today? Your beliefs are always manifested in your words and actions. Make sure that everything you say and do from now on is consistent with the beliefs that you want to have in the person that you want to become. In time, you will replace more and more of your self-limiting beliefs with life-enhancing beliefs. Over time, you will completely reprogram yourself for success. When this occurs, the transformation that takes place in your outer life will amaze you and all the people around you. Defining goals with clarity is one of the most important factors for enhancing personal productivity. Understanding what you desire and mastering the methods to achieve those goals makes it easier to overcome psychological barriers and procrastination. Moreover, it provides a sense of satisfaction upon promptly and completely fulfilling tasks. Stagnation and lack of motivation stem from the vagueness and ambiguity regarding work goals, as well as the sequence of executing those tasks. Strive to avoid falling into this common situation by clearly and precisely identifying goals for all the tasks you need to accomplish. Write down on paper all your thoughts and fundamental principles leading to success. Success with the same starting foundation, such as educational background, professional knowledge, and work capacity is common. But those who articulate their thoughts into specific goals on paper will complete five to ten times more work than others. The necessary steps are 1. Accurately identify the tasks that need to be done. 2. Build a habit of writing down all thoughts along with plans. 3. Determine the time to complete the tasks. 4. List all possible options to achieve the set goals. 5. Convert feasible options into action plans. 6. Take action. 7. Commitment. Complete a portion of the tasks in the plan every day. Starting now, take out a piece of blank paper and list 10 goals you want to achieve in the coming year. Visualize the time a year has passed and those goals are right in front of you. Use active sentences and first-person pronouns to deeply embed the goals in your mind. For example, the annual income I earn is, I own a brand of car, I have conquered the customer market in my area, I have exceeded the annual revenue target. Afterward, review this list of 10 goals and select one significant goal that has the potential to make a significant difference and positively impact your life and career. Focus all your resources on this goal by outlining a detailed plan on paper, setting a fast completion timeline, and getting started on each part of the work, persevering until you truly achieve your goal. Just this practice alone can change your life. Planning how to eat an elephant is an impressive way of addressing significant and complex macro-level issues. The most accurate answer is that you have to eat it one bite at a time. This means that before you embark on execution, you need to break down the problem into many detailed parts, prioritize them, and set specific deadlines. When you apply this process, you will complete any task and goal you set out to achieve. The intelligence and ability to analyze the real situation set goals, plan implementation, and decide on actions are effective tools to overcome your own intrinsic resistance and enhance work efficiency. This tool will also determine your attitude towards work and life. Regularly thinking and planning will help unleash your inner potential, stimulate creativity, and enhance resources both physically and mentally. The best time for you to make a to-do list is in the evening after finishing a day's work. Put all the unfinished tasks into the task for the next day section and add all new tasks for the next day. When you make a detailed list in the evening, your subconscious will sketch out ways to carry out each task on that list while you sleep. The next morning, you will wake up with a sharp mind, clarity, along with great ideas and almost unconscious solutions. This will help you complete tasks quickly and more effectively than the initial problem-solving approach you thought of. Starting today, plan your daily, weekly, and monthly work schedule for the upcoming time. You should prepare a notebook or some blank papers to jot down all the tasks for tomorrow. Don't forget to add any new ideas that arise to that list. In summary, list all complex and important projects, tasks, or goals for your future. Arrange the list in order of priority and importance, then review it in reverse priority order to avoid missing any factors. 
The important thing is to cultivate the habit of working based on the prepared plan. You will be surprised to see your work efficiency increasing day by day with very optimistic results. Applying the 80 20 rule, also known as the Pareto Principle, is one of the most complete rules that embody the essence of time and life management concepts. This rule states that roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. For example, 80% of results come from 20% of efforts, 80% of revenue comes from 20% of customers, and so on. By identifying the top 10 to 20% priority tasks that contribute to 80 to 90% of the results, you can focus your energy on tasks that truly matter and eliminate or delegate tasks that do not contribute significantly. Evaluate tasks based on predictions to identify important tasks that need to be done next. Successful individuals always have a clear future direction, not only in the short term but also in the long term. They analyze current choices and actions to ensure they align with their long-term vision. Having a clear understanding of what truly matters for your long-term future will help you make reasonable and accurate decisions about current priority goals. Important goals are those that can bring positive, stable, and long-lasting results in the future. Before embarking on any task, seriously answer the question, what results will I achieve by doing this task? What will happen if I neglect it? Time always moves on, and the biggest question you need to answer is how you should use your time effectively and what goals you need to achieve. Regularly review your list of tasks, activities, and projects. Identify which projects or tasks, if completed quickly and excellently, will have the most positive and powerful impact on your life. Efficiently handling low-value tasks in the new year involves thinking methods based on the zero-based approach. Ask yourself, if I am still doing this task now, Having predicted the results, would I do it again? Evaluate all your activities based on the circumstances you are currently living in and eliminate or postpone tasks that do not bring significant benefits. Prioritize tasks using the ABCDE method. Review your task list and mark tasks with letters A, B, C, D, or E according to their priority level. Identify task or project A1 and immediately start implementing it. Practice this method every day and apply it when making weekly or monthly task lists or projects. When this becomes a successful habit, it will be built on a more solid foundation. Focus on key areas and frequently ask yourself why you are paid. Identify the areas and skills necessary to excel in your tasks. Rate yourself in each specific area and find a key skill that, if mastered, will have the most positive impact on your work. Prioritize three important tasks and three goals in your life. Identify the top three tasks you need to accomplish in a day and the top three goals in each area you care about. Arrange them in order and plan to achieve those goals. Be prepared before starting any task to overcome hesitation and procrastination. Being fully prepared with everything you need before starting a task is crucial for accomplishing more tasks. Lay out all the necessary ingredients, utensils, and pre-prepared materials to launch your important task smoothly. Pay attention to your workspace and tidy it up to create a more energetic and confident environment. Execute tasks step by step, focusing on each specific task at hand. Start by choosing a goal or project and listing all the necessary steps to achieve it. Complete each task on the list one by one until all the work is completed. Improve your professional skills starting today by committing to constantly honing and expanding your knowledge. Identify the important skills that help you achieve goals quickly and optimally and start developing them. Leverage your unique abilities and frequently ask yourself important questions about your career and life direction. Identify key obstacles and your most important goal today. Take immediate action to implement the plan you have set and create pressure for yourself by setting deadlines for completion. Write down all the necessary steps to implement an important task or project before you start working on it. Regularly seek different ways to save, organize, and consolidate your work time. Focus on the important results you have been entrusted to accomplish and build urgency in all tasks you undertake. Cultivate the habit of working quickly and efficiently in areas where you are likely to procrastinate. Start today by creating a sense of urgency in all tasks you undertake. Choose an area where you're likely to procrastinate and commit to cultivating the habit of working quickly and efficiently in that area. Focus on each task, set clear specific goals, and quickly start working on the most important goals. Work diligently until the task is completed in its entirety. 
This is the effective method for working efficiently in maximizing individual labor productivity. Consistently applying these principles and practices will lay the groundwork for your future success and openness to new opportunities for growth and development. The development of character is the great business of life. Your ability to develop a reputation as a person of character and honor is the highest achievement of both social and business life. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, What you do speaks so loudly that I cannot hear a word you say. The person you are today, your innermost character, is the sum total of all your choices and decisions in life up to this date. Each time you have chosen rightly and acted consistently with the very best that you know, you have strengthened your character and become a better person. The reverse is also true. Each time you have compromised, taken the easy way, or behaved in a manner inconsistent with what you knew to be right, you have weakened your character and softened your personality. There are a series of virtues or values that are usually possessed by a person of character. These are courage, compassion, generosity, persistence, and friendliness, among others. We'll talk about some of these in part three of this book. Coming before all these values, however, is the most important one of all when determining the depth and strength of your character, integrity. It is your level of integrity, living in complete truth with yourself and others, that demonstrates more than anything else the quality of your character. In a way, integrity is actually the value that guarantees all the other values. When your level of integrity is higher, you are more honest with yourself and more likely to live consistently with all the other values that you admire and respect. However, it takes tremendous self-discipline to become a person of character. It takes considerable willpower to always do the right thing in every situation. And it takes both self-discipline and willpower to resist the temptation to cut corners, to take the easy way, or to act for short-term advantage. All of life is a test to see what you are really made of deep down inside. It is only when you are under pressure, when you are forced to choose one way or another, to either live consistently with a value or to compromise it, that you demonstrate your true character. Emerson also said, guard your integrity as a sacred thing. Nothing at last is sacred except the integrity of your own mind. You are a choosing organism. You are constantly making choices, one way or the other. Every choice you make is a statement about your true values and priorities. At each moment, you choose what is more important or of higher value to you over what is less important or of lesser value. The only bulwark against temptation, the path of least resistance, and the expediency factor is character. The only way you can develop your full character is by exerting your willpower in every situation. When you're tempted to do what is easy and expedient rather than what is correct and necessary, the payoff for becoming a person of character, for exercising your willpower and self-discipline to live consistently with the very best that you know, is tremendous. When you choose the higher value over the lower, the more difficult over the easy, the right over the wrong, you feel good about yourself. Your self-esteem increases, you like and respect yourself more, and you have a greater sense of personal pride. In addition to feeling excellent about yourself when you behave with character, you also earn the respect and esteem of all the people around you. They will look up to you and admire you. Doors will be open for you, people will help you, you'll be paid more, promoted faster, and given even greater responsibilities. As you become a person of honor and character, opportunities will appear all around you. On the other hand, you can have all the intelligence, talent, and ability in the world, but if people do not trust you, you will never get ahead. People will not hire you, and if they do, they will fire you as soon as possible. Financial institutions will not lend you money because birds of a feather flock together. The only associates, never friends, you will ever have will be other people of questionable character. Furthermore, since the people you associate with have a major effect on your attitude and personality, you make or break your entire life with the quality of your character or the lack thereof. Aristotle wrote, All advancement in society begins with the development of the character of the young. Begins with the learning and practice of values. This means that advancement in your life begins with the learning and practice of values. You learn values in one or all of the three ways. Instruction, study, and practice. One of the chief roles of parenting is to teach children values. This requires patient instruction in explaining values to them over and over again as they are growing up. Once is never enough. The value and the importance of living by that value must be explained. Parents must not only give illustrations but also contrast the adherence to a value, especially that of telling the truth, with its opposite, that of lying or telling half-truths. 
Children are very susceptible to the lessons they receive from the important people in their lives as they're growing up. They accept what you say as their parent as a fact, as absolute truth. 